air transport agreement with the United States. I am pleased to report to this August House and the nation that the Fiji first official air transportation air transport agreement for an open sky was signed with the United States on Wednesday, the 28th of August, in the margins of the meeting, after our cabinet approval the day before under DPM Subcommittee. The agreement will advance our country's bilateral aviation cooperation and bring civil aviation transportation relationship between the United States and Fiji to the highest modern standard. The agreement will expand our economic and commercial partnership, promote people-to-people -people ties, and create new opportunities for customers, airlines, and travel companies. Under the agreement, air carriers will be able to provide more affordable, convenient, and efficient air services to travelers and shippers, promoting tourism and commerce. The agreement includes unrestricted capacity and frequency of services for both passenger and all cargo carriers, open route rights, an open charter regime, self-handling provisions, and open code sharing opportunities. I'm confident, Mr. Speaker, sir, that this will foster increased investment, maintain trade, and increase visitor arrival for Fiji's tourism industry, and also contribute to our continuing growth. Fiji Airways' new $90 flight route will commence on the 10th of December of this year. Other bilateral engagements, Mr. Speaker, sir, I also take this time to acknowledge other bilateral engagement by ministers and senior officials from our delegation. These included the Minister for Regional Development, Fish, Nation, and Forest, uh, Minister, Minister for Regional Development, the Minister for Fish, Fisheries and Forests, the Minister for Health, and the Minister for Home Affairs, as well as Permanent Secretaries, our Permanent Representative to the United Nations, High Commissioner, and Special Envoy supported by technical staff. Fiji actively participated in various side events and meetings that were held on the margins of the leaders' meeting. Mr. Speaker, sir, now that the meeting has concluded, the next stage is for work to start. All in all, Mr. Speaker, sir, the meeting in now was a timely reminder of the resilience of our Pacific region when we work in solidarity and unity. This was evident when meeting proceedings were barely affected by a 6.6 .6 magnitude earthquake that the, and aftershocks occurred at, after heavy rain in, in Tongatapu on Monday the 26th of August. It was a stark reminder to all that were present of the challenges that we face on this side of the world. To conclude, Mr. Speaker, sir, I would like to extend my deepest gratitude to His Majesty the King, King Tupo VI, the Prime Minister, the Crown Prince and Crown Princess, the Royal Highnesses Prince Tupo Toa, Urukalala and Princess uh, Shinaita Kala, who were at the meeting throughout the, uh, the, uh, the five days uh, occupying Tonga as the chair in, in the uh, conference. The people of Tonga, Excellent arrangement made in housing, hosting the 2024 Pacific Leaders Meeting and for the warm hospitality extended to all delegations during our stay. Tonga's rich culture and tradition, vibrant dances and jubilant mafana, uplifting sounds of choir and harmonious community spirit of the Friendly Isles was on full display, a most remarkable experience and wonderful showcase to our Pacific way. The speaker's a ministerial statement are great opportunities for the government to keep the opposition members abreast with what we are doing. It is where we also benefited while we were on that side. When they made ministerial statements, we knew where to take, on, take over from when, uh, when sides change. So please do not uh, try and crowd out our ministerial statement. It's our way of informing the opposition and the people of what government is doing. Thank you, sir.